Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel Software Testing. It's me Daniel. Happy that you're here. You have seen it in the title. Today I would like to talk about the State of Testing Survey 2024 and that's a project that I love to support for many years now. I don't know for how many years I'm going to support it like actively in terms of blogging and now video content but what the people from Practitest and Tea Time with Testers are conducting things since I think 2020 2014 not 20 um, so they are asking us the software testing community like hey how are you going to do in your field of software testing where do you see the software testing community heading towards toward the industry what are you your fears and stuff like that and i'm really really happy that the report of 2024 is out now and in that video i would like to take a quick look on the survey results disclaimer it's not the full survey that I'm going to show you today. I just handpicked it a few slides from the report and that I would like to share with you, that I would like to talk with you today. If you would like to see the full report, check the link down below. There is a direct access to the state of testing report. So here it is. Practitest and Tea Time with Testers conducted again, yet again, the 2024 review or state of testing review. And that's really cool. So what is the basically the, the state of testing survey all about. For those of you who don't know it, um, you could ask like the questions usually in the beginning of the year, like with six um, content fields. So first of all is demographics and background, methodologies and processes, tooling, impact of DevOps and AI and software testing was this year topic, the business impact of testing and your very personal perspective is got asked on a long survey that you could fill in. I hope you participated. So, and that's basically now also the, 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 the content structure for the survey. So let's dive into it. First of all, again, opening note, it's Joel and Lalit. They are the main contributor or like creator behind that survey. Give them a shout out on social media if you would like it to do so. They're doing a really great job for us as the community. So first thing that I would like to show you. So what is your current testing position? As you can see here, we have 2022, 2023, 24, and the majority of people who, who filled the survey basically, and it's not something a surprise that it hasn't really changed over the year, is it's like test lead managers and directors, test engineers and QA engineers. Some call themselves testers, test analysts that are conducting automation engineers, but you can see it on the, on the field here. So there's no big surprise that the, the, the people who are filling the survey in the past years maybe stayed in the same role or grew in their position. And, and that's the majority of people who basically um, conducted in it. What, what I think is really nice to see is like, there's still some development team leads over here. Some software engineers even uh, filled out the surveys and also sometimes project manager, which, which I would love to see even more in the upcoming years of the, of the survey, because I think they have a, a huge impact on software testing and also the overall quality of a product, right? So that's why this is important. So this is like the foundation, like who really gave the answers of that survey. And, and that's also really interesting is, is a, it's a lot of numbers on that slide, first of all, but it's like what the question was, what is your annual income from testing and testing related activities? And if you haven't seen, I have done videos on um, salaries and software testing, so make sure to check them out. And the numbers are pretty much the same that I put in for, for Europe in my videos. And as you can see here, so depending on the years in software testing, this is the expected salary that you can see from, um, from the various countries uh, based in US dollars. So you can start from India from zero for years to 10 years. That, that's, that's basically the salaries income. And that's pretty interesting to see like how the, the how, how it differs the, the salary ranges and they're not too many change. I mean, you can clearly see that North America is like they have a different salary ranges than compared to to Europe, to Eastern and Western Europe. And um, but it's really nice to see that that the salary is, is um, almost equally split. I would say across the board in in the field here, and that's cool. That's good to see. Also good to know in case you are like let's say two to five years in the, in the role as a software test engineer, or whatever and you would like to get even into, into a higher roles, uh, some ranges that you can expect from a salary point of view. Yeah. Um, so now jumping to the, to the second uh, section, and there was a question like, which development and testing models or principles does your organization uh, follow? And there's also no, no, no 
and the first claims not such a big surprise it says like the majority of people who filled in the survey like more than 90 percent said okay we're working agile agile like scrum kanban scrum barn xp or whatever and also there's like a little decline in in, in bdd you know in devops over here as you can see here there was a high ramp up in in 2023 a little decrease in 2024 um, but what also what's stated here what's really interesting here to see is that um, the TDD grew a bit from last year as you can see here 18 percent now to 23 percent which I think is really cool but um, something that we have to to see like in the next year especially for those who work with TDD this year and that you can still continue it next year and this is something really important as well for for teams to start early with stuff for testing, think early enough on, on this testing um, quality thing uh, side of topics and also from a development point of view that developers start writing tests first and then they're code, coding it. So that, that's pretty interesting to see. Um, also what I think is really interesting to see and I also have done a video on CICD lately, um, are testers part of the CICD process? And I think that's that's really good what we've seen here. Yes, we are an active part of defining and maintaining the process because I think it's, it's 48%. That's really good to see the uh, growth rate over here because we as software testers, we have to be involved in that, in that process because it's such an important field that we can um, give our ideas, our insights, our thinking um, and also to get most out of the, the build pipeline, right? Like when to execute the tests, like which reports are we going to, to generate from the results and what non, um, 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 what are the static analysis tools that we can use in order to get more insights in the field of, of it. And that's really, really great. Yeah. And also like here, it's, it's no, we're not, we, we don't know we get the reports, but we don't much do else. So it's decreasing. That's good. We have access to the reports. So not only, not every one of us has directly, um, let, let's say access to those systems in case you haven't you should fight for getting those access yeah so that that's really important that's something that i really like to see and i hope it's even growing higher next year um, now jumping to the next uh, section of the survey is called tooling um, so your tech stack which testing related tools does your organization use to support the qa process i mean there are like three big winners over here it's first is jira the second one is postman and the, the third one is selenium um, I think that's that's really hard to judge here. What what is this good? Is this bad? Because it differs so much on the the company, the product development processes, uh, the tech stack that you're having in your company. But I mean, Jira is is a well known tool for you know um, the whole development process of of project management and also product management to, to write down the requirements and stuff like that use it for bug tracking, task management and whatnot. And also like Postman is really famous for API testing. And yes, Selenium is still um, a, a, a good framework, a tool that can be used for writing automation scripts uh, for, for different tools. But as I said, there are so many tools on the market that we can use as software testers. I have done also a couple of videos on that topic feel free to check so i mean now we have like playwright coming around the corner in every in every space it's like the new big the new big topic in the in the industry uh, which was selenium some years ago who knows what's next but i think the tech stack might look different on in every other aspect yeah um also interesting was that like how effectively do your testing tools support you in your tasks and it's cool that you see automation tools are very effectively used that's good, like almost 85 or 85% say yes, it's very effective or somewhat effective. That's really good. So like the majority of people really make use of automation to free up their time to do some more proper testing. Also test management is, is uh, quite quite established in companies. Low testing is, is looks a bit different. Uh, so we have, yes, some companies doing it very effective somehow, not very effectively. So not at all. So this is something that, that should like decrease in the next years because we should do more monitor, uh, like more load testing because it's important. And and also on the monitoring side, it says yes, we have uh, more than uh, 80, 68 percent of, of yes, we're doing it. That's good. It's effective. It's also really really good to have to really see what's going to happen on production in terms of yeah APIs, structure of the of the system, uh, health of the system, and stuff like that. So yeah, that's good. So we are in a good way here. Uh, I love those numbers. 
Uh, next section that we're going. So it's now the, the impact of AI and, and DevOps. I mean, I have done a lot of videos in AI lately. And here's a question. Here was a question like, how are you using AI tools as part of your testing processes? And it says, okay, 60% of you said, I'm not using AI tools for testing. It's okay, because it's still early phases and some companies still restrict um, the access to AI. But this is going to change over the next years because AI is the next big topic for sure. Um, some of you told like, hey, 25% say we use it for test case creation, test case optimization, for test planning and other. And that's really cool to see like test case creation and optimization and also planning, um, writing some test strategies and test data and stuff like that. And I have done a couple of videos on that. Just check the video list on my channel. Um, that's pretty helpful. So you can use AI already for those topics. The better your prompts are, the better the output is. So that's really cool that you, some of you already use it. And I think next year, this is going to look much different. Um, how do you anticipate generative AI impacting your testing? Um, and that's also pretty amazing to see, like in the very first year of this AI a hype train. Um, I mean, it started off in 2023. Um, almost a year ago when a chat GPT was announced and everybody had access and almost one year later um, we can see that 51% of you said that it improved the test automation efficiency and that's pretty amazing. Yeah, 45 of you said okay ongoing learning for testers in AI driven testing. I can totally relate. It's still early. Many tool manufacturers jumping on the AI hype and we are going to see a lot of changes to our industry in the next few years. Yeah, and you can see other other sections who gave um, some good answers as well. Uh, jumping to the sixth, no, oh, sorry, section, which was the uh, the business impact of testing. And here it says like, what are the top five skills and knowledge areas that testers need to thrive in today's testing industry? And I mean, that's never green, no surprise, it's communication. This I think is the, the, the most rated and have to have communication or the skill that we have to have is communication. Even though it declined like per 10% from 23 to 24, not sure why. I think it's still still really, really important. Um, and as you can see, other areas are like functional testing, automation, automation patterns, principles and practices, API. Uh, and you can see there's like almost in every section there's a, there's a decline. Um, do we have any races over here? Not too many. No. But yeah, I mean, that's depending on the people who fulfilled the survey, but still 60% of you, almost 60% said, yes, communication skills, uh, skills are still important. And I can just relate to that. It is, it's really important to tell the people like what we have tested, what we've seen, why we see this critical or problematic and to communicate efficiently. That's important, yeah. So what else do we have? Um, the last slide for today is like, what changes would you like to see as a tester that could improve your ability to perform your job effectively. Yeah, and there are three categories over here. QA and testing appreciation. Some of you said, okay, the lack of support and experience from org engineering leaders with quality engineering and testing. I would like to have more support from my organization. Right now, it seems that no one cares about QA. And yes, I have seen it as well in the industry and that's pretty sad. Um, that again, still like upper management, uh, they don't see the value of testing. And also many companies did a lot of layoffs recently. And QAs are, were always among those people who got laid off. And I think this is going to turn around with AI coming more to the companies because they have to judge the output uh, of the AI. And I think it's going to change in, in now and then. So that's, that's important. So if you are in the management position, management role, support your testers, support your quality engineers. They're really, really important for your company. Uh, another section is like more time to study. They would like to have more of it. Yes, that's always also something that I can relate to. But in case you don't have uh, like dedicated time for you to learn new skills in your day to day job, that's not cool. But at the same time, you can do it in your spare time to get better, to study, to learn, learn new tools and to read about new technologies, something that you have to do anyways, because working in tech is related to lifelong learning. So you, you have to do something, yeah? And yeah, and also like AI, AI adoption. Testers should embrace new technology like AI, no code, low code. Absolutely agree. 
more focus on data engineering skills. Yes, because AI is based on data, big data. So this is something that you have to thrive through. Large language models, how AI is going to work, what are they doing with it and stuff like that. And also the better integration with AI tools between business intelligence like Jira. Yes, also something that you should investigate on, like what is your tech stack? How can AI change your way of working and stuff like that? So that's also already on your mind, on your, on your workplaces. That's cool, pretty amazing to see. So, and I hope that you liked uh, the video for today talking about the state of testing survey. As I said before, check the link down below to get the full access of the, of the survey. It has much, much more, uh, many, many more pages um, that I have uh, shown you today in this, in this little tiny video. Um, as always, if you like it, leave a like, leave a subscription and share it with your network. Spread the word about the video and also the state of testing survey to support the testing community. Thank you. Thanks for coming by today and have a great day. Bye-bye.